Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fact News. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Pro Joe, and this is going to be a quick reaction to the Flyers' 4-3 OT win over the Buffalo Sabres yesterday, as well as some talk on the Shane Gosh's spare news of him being put on waivers by the team after playing over 19 minutes. Pretty good of ice time on the ice. Yeah, one shot yesterday. He did take the one penalty, but um, was a part of um, that winning uh, way and was on the ice, and it was not one of the guys that ended up getting benched. Um, to go to a smaller lineup. So it is pretty peculiar. Also, obviously, he uh, questioned um, the effort, which rightfully so. He got mad even after a win, which G did that yesterday, where I didn't like how G was more tempered last week. I loved how he was even mad after a win, um, calling for more and everything, and that was fantastic to see. I love to see that. I mean, this team came out flat against a Buffalo team that now lost 18 straight. Uh, Yokoharu was wide open in front of the net. Cody Eakin, that wasn't <clears throat> a terribly defended play because you had two guys, you got the shot off quick, like they said on the broadcast, but you still got to be able to pick up Cody Eakin coming in. The guy only has two goals in the season. It's not like he's a pivotal goal scorer. And then Brandon Montour just snuck right in as a Thompson, I believe it was, had the puck and was fighting for it and uh, threw it back to him. So you got to be able to kind of control these things. Uh, the the best play of the game, I would say the play of the game. I mean, obviously, Kevin Hayes scoring from Sanheim. That was nice to see Travis Sanheim also be able to get an assist. Myers has looked the best better uh, since um, we've been uh, at the end of this month looking and at really overly analyzing this team and the struggles. Uh, Myers, since coming back from his benching, has looked the best on that line. But Sanheim, I would say... Um, after the first period when everybody just looked sloppy on defense and all that, and we came back and started battling more um, in the second and then specifically in the third, I thought in the second, the Flyers who outshot them uh, in that period 12-9 to 9, looked fairly good. They just couldn't get anything uh, through all mark and were getting as efficient of shots as they started getting in the third period when they beat them by 5-15 to 10 in shots and were really able to pounce. Uh, but this Flyers team stuck with it. Hayes scored on the nice assist by Sanheim. The play of the day was when Voracek was tied up along the boards, kicked it in front to Couturier. He was then able to backhand it from was a slam dunk goal for Claude Giroux's ninth. I would say that was the play of the day. Um, and then, who said baseball was a game of inches? Hockey's also a game of inches. The Sabres just missed an empty net goal um, when the player fell and tried to uh, poke it in front. I can't remember if that was Montour or someone else that did that. And it just missed the empty net. And the Flyers were able to come down on an assist from Provorov and Giroux to have John Couturier tie it up after he was a big part of the goal prior to make it 3-2. to two. So that was huge. Coots had a great night. It was a big part of the 3-2 to two goal after Voracek had the beautiful play off the boards to him, the G. And then was a big part of tying it up from Provorov and Claude Giroux himself. And then in <clears throat> overtime, a big guy that was a part of the game tying goal with the primary assist, Ivan Provoa, is able to win it on a two-on-one with Travis Konechny, who lays a brilliant sauce, little mini saucer pass over to him, and then Provorov capitalizes on the backhander. So this game's hard to judge. The Flyers should never have been down 3 nothing in the first place, like Claude Giroux said. You're happy they came back, but you have to play as others other than G in post-game quotes and a lot of different people I've watched, uh, Amadeo um, and others, um, Chris Mayer and others, check out their great videos on YouTube. Uh, this team, as a lot of the great analysts and YouTubers say, need to come out better. You need to come out stronger. You shouldn't have to come back against these poor teams, especially Buffalo. Buffalo is the worst team to really come out and lay a bad first period against in the league because they're on one of the, they tied the worst losing skid in the history of hockey. So they're a team you definitely don't want to struggle against. So this team was like, or this game was like a two-way street. You were very pissed off at the start. Then you were happy they came back, but still, like Jamie kind of tweeted yesterday, kind of felt like a loss after coming back because you shouldn't have had to come back against Buffalo. And I think that's how this team should treat it. They should treat this game as a game. Yeah, they won, but it was not by any means a, an impressive win. You had to come back against Buffalo and now come in pissed off um, and really come out and pounce tomorrow against the Sabres when you play them at 7.30 tomorrow evening. Um, and then you go to play the Islanders on Saturday. So beating the Sabres in both of these games is pivotal and crucial. But we will round this video up by getting into Shane Gossespear, who played over 19 minutes yesterday. I thought looked pretty good. And then the team proceeds to put him on waivers. Um, for him, it doesn't really make much sense because 
obviously you're not going to put a Sanheim or a Myers on waivers. No kidding. Like, those guys are struggling. You're not going to put them on waivers. This must mean that there's a move in the future that Fletcher's banking on for a defensive defense and maybe a Jomerson, and then that would make more sense and cancel it out. But he's played over 19 yesterday. He's averaging just at 20 minutes, 20 minutes and one second a night. Uh, Shane Goss, the spare is, according to Cap Friendly. He's been a pretty important guy. No, he's not the most consistent player, obviously, on defense. But he's a guy that works hard, really shows that good uh, passe and work ethic. And then he's a guy that really has some spunk after the post-game press conference, even when we won <clears throat> um, last week against the Islanders, to say, we have to, this is not good, but we have to really step up against the team and really st stop embarrassing our goaltenders, basically, paraphrasing, and ended up throwing some uh, cuss words in there as well. But Ghost really seems to be a guy that's really helping the locker room, really strengthening the locker room. And also him and Morin together for the two games they were in were a big part of that one win. Um, we got him with one of the uh, only good-looking defensive pairs in the 8-3 to three embarrassing loss to the Rangers. That's a Benajag got another natural hat trick. So... For me, the timing of this doesn't make much sense, unless if there's a huge move on the horizon, or just a move for a Jomerson, which would be a big move to get a defensive defenseman, and maybe you're going to get two defensemen instead of one, and that would make some sense into why you want to get rid of Shane Gulch to spare his cap hit, who could end up going to the Panthers since they lost Ekblad. There's other teams that need some uh, L.A. who's trying to stay in the playoff race with some of the history of how, the, not history, but this year some of their defense has been banged up and Bjornfurt's not 100% ready to take the mantle yet. Maybe they're a team that'll pick him up. So there's teams that would debate picking up Ghost. And he's a guy that has helped his team, been a guy that's been here for a while, which is more important than some people think it is because he's a leader now in the locker room and obviously showed that he's an established leader from the comments he made last week. Um, I think it's weird timing because Morin and Ghost was a line back in 2018 prior to Morin's injuries that was talked about as a potential perfect pairing. They've looked good in these couple of games together. Now just doesn't seem like the right time to release Ghost. Plus, he's been playing well. Uh, Derek Pouillard for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, as I talked about in my Ghostly Take videos I do for this channel, has looked really good for the Phantoms. So maybe there's a trade in the making that they're doing, and they figure until Go if Ghost gets claimed to put Pouillard in, who's more of an offensive defenseman, uh, with more in, and uh, they've been, uh, I don't think they've always really played together. I know they haven't always on pairings with the Phantoms, but obviously they've been together on the same team with the Phantoms for, some, for a few games at least this year, so maybe they would put them together since he's more offensive-minded, which is the reason he never got the call up yet this year, it seems in general, like Road Truck was talking about on one game the other day, the great Bob Road Truck. So it will be interesting to see what the Flyers do if Ghost does get claimed. My assumption is Derek Pouillot will come up since he is an offensive-minded defenseman and has looked great in the minors. He also deserves a shot. I thought he should have got a shot when Gus was really struggling early or when Ghost was struggling earlier on this season going through some rush. You could have gave Pouillot a shot to rest Ghost like you bench some of these other people to get them going, where now Ghost is actually looking good, and then you're going to looking good again. He started off looking a little shady, then started looking great. His legs got back under him, went a little cold again, and now looks really good. And now you're going to put him on waivers when he's looking good with Morin, who's a guy that you're trying to get to look his best too. When he's playing about 10 to 11 tonight, a night with Ghost, and then Ghost kind of rotates to Provy, which I've always liked that pairing. So I think that rotation system actually has worked um, better than the defense has worked in general, which ain't saying much, but has worked better than the defense has worked in general before we went to that system. Because you looked pretty good against the Rangers on Saturday, the second game, and then after not knowing what the hell was going on in the first, you looked good in this Buffalo game. So I think it's just bad time, and they should not have put Ghost on waivers. Hopefully he doesn't get claimed. The only way this makes any sense is if you're trading for, say, a Jomerson combined with a Golagoski because of their cap hit, if you're really going for it. A Jomerson combined with Demirs. You're trading for Jomerson, then you're trading another team for a forward that you think really shakes up the group. But you're trading for Jomerson and then another defenseman on another team that also gets paid, like David Savard or something like that, that's also paid over $4 million. So this seems like there has to be another move in the making. Otherwise, it makes no sense to move on from Shane Goss to spare um, in this aspect whatsoever. But I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, for Sports Fan News, I'm Projo. And for SteelFlyers.com and Flyers Nitty Gritty, please check out those fine websites. Please like, comment, and subscribe here as well. Uh, trying to get to 125 by the end of this week and then work our way up to 130 by the end of the first week of April. I hope you all are having a great, safe, and pleasant start to your week. Enjoy all the great hockey action. And I hope you all, again, enjoyed this video. 
Let's go Flyers. I don't know what you're doing uh, putting Ghost on waivers, but hopefully he doesn't get claimed. And if he does, hopefully you really got something up your sleeves. Otherwise, this is just dumbfoundingly stupid. So this has been a reaction to the Flyers versus Sabres 4-3 OT win, as well as some thoughts on the Shane Gossespierre being put on waivers transaction. Have a great save and pleasant day, everybody. Peace out.